or blocks or something like this because I never take care about the ground too much. For me, it's not very important. Yeah, as you can see, it can look like very, very basic and roughly thing. Uh, people usually ask me about the uh, brushes I use. Uh, Corel has a very, very good um, amount and variability of different brushes. So usually I never create my own one because for me uh, the brushes which is already exist is much more enough. So I use three types of brush. At first, this is acrylic set because here we can uh, find a lot of brushes which make a texture. For example, texture of skin. Texture of skin, texture of hair, texture of eyelashes, texture of uh, fabric, and other different textures. For example, cups. This would be one of my mostly favorite brushes forever because it helps me very, very gently and nicely with skin texture. The second set I use all the time is oil. Usually I use it for some small details like um, I don't know, a piece of uh, eyes, the same eyelashes, lips, and the uh, different type of hair because I really insert things in hair and I really like to spend a lot of time, usually spend this one day to make the hair of my star of my character complete. One is my favorite tail or brush. You see, I use it for visualization and other stuff. And the third, my favorite set is simple brush. Usually I use flat color and digital air brush. Digital air brush is a very, very nice for smoothing, adding some small things of color. Smooth everything, adding some shadows and highlights. And make all the picture a little bit more soft. And also I really like that color, which is maybe a little bit strange because it's a hard brush and not so much variability. But when you work with the texture, it is always very, very nice to have some hard brush. Make some visualization or some hard lines or some hard uh, Highlight, for example, the thing can give the picture uh, much more light view. Um, the second thing I always use is playing with different pages. Usually, I never use one hundred percent page. Never, because this is let's see, makes the picture very very flat. So the maximum opacity I use is around 50, and it is pretty rarely. Usually I use kind of opacity just for um, making the ground or some other stuff that I want to cover with a solid color. Usually it is around 50 to 35. Katarina, I'm sorry, but yes? we still have people asking um, if the mic can be adjusted. Better? 
Yeah, it seems like, I don't know what's happening as you begin to speak. It seems like there's more interference as you go on. Better now? Yeah, you sound good now. Yes, Thank you. Nice. So, for this moment, let's go uh, ahead during the process of creating some space. Here you can see my palette. This is the first uh, I create. This is my palette. This is the colors of um, skin, with the basic colors of makeup, and with the basic color of outer. I use this palette all the time, and just need skin colors if I want to add some skin. Okay. Now I would like to go a little bit to creating texture of skin. As you can see, I work with the use diameter of the brush. Making the shape, the general shape of the face. To be sure the skin is going to look really, really soft. Some things I also can give you is never try to make your image very, very, very perfect. Because sometimes people just work and work and there's a lot of details trying to create a very, very thin, analyzing look. But the picture starts to look like a life. So sometimes you can uh, keep some small stroke or some non-blending pieces in your uh, artwork to some additional texture because when you between uh, objects, human objects, uh, animals, and, um, nature, whatever you picture, it is always about texturing. You need to create things that textures on your uh, work is alive. And usually when you take a look at some objects in real life, it's not complete 100% start. Some pieces of this object are always smoothing in your eyes because of the, some structure of your eyes, some structure of your vision. So just don't try to make everything very, very perfect. It is usually never work. Here yeah, you can see that I'm working really, really fast. Just to make some visualization. You can do when I'm changing skin or something like this. I'm missing all the sets of brushes to add some additional texture. And I prefer to use small diameter of brushes because it gives me much more reliability. And also, I never stop too long with the one piece of the face or complete character or something like this. I prefer to move from one piece of the picture to another. And from one part of the face to another, just to make sure it is completely worked together. And of course, it's good when you're saying some object uh, you want to It's very nice to also take care about the next part. But here, as you can see, I'm working at the same time with both eyes. Yeah. 
even verbal that well, hello? For some reason, we seem to be somewhat losing you again. Again? Yeah. It sounds, uh, it's sounding very distorted. Better now again? I can hear you now, yeah. Which is pretty strange because I don't change anything. As you can see now, I'm working with some shadows and go into the shadows and into the shadows. When you're working, always try to think about the character situation because painting for me. It's not just um, creating some something on the paper or something digital canvas. It is uh, some way to to take my idea to people. Some way to tell some story. Give uh, my viewer feeling of something really happened on this picture, or something is going to happen, because. This is very important. You can be very, very good in the technical stuff, in different technical details. You can paint absolutely perfectly with all the anatomy rules and others. But if you are not thinking good enough before you start to create some connection, this challenge is going to be flat anyway. You always need to think about special expression, about um, general idea, about some you can use to feel free to say the year to year. Now you can see this picture is going to be a little bit more detailed. Usually I take care about anatomy from the beginning of creating pictures, but here I definitely made a little bit of mistake to the face shape, so now I just need to fix it a little. Also, I never use a lot of different layers when I make some pictures. I don't know ask about uh, different painters, but for me, making a lot of layers to create some additional mess in my work. So, as I decided that I was going to paint something which I really want to paint and in case I am always more than sure in the final result I want to get. So it's no big deal to work on a one or a two layers just keeping it in a very traditional way. Because for example when you work in a very traditional painting, you have this one canvas and uh, we have no ability to turn some layer off, to turn something back. So in this, if I make some mistakes, something like this, I just um, create new layer and paint over it. Or just paint the same layer. No big deal. Plus there's some tricks that not a lot of people would like to use because it needs some time. To get used to it, and the rhythm is really, really beautiful and it really works good. Okay, now you can see that I create some facial expression and she starts to be a little bit more realistic. Um, the most favorite part for me to think is this always hair. Always. I think that hair is very, very, very important and I can see hair much less about some face or makeup or some other stuff, but here as all my people will always be very, very, very good. To make the painting, I usually use oils, soft cover brushes, merry round brushes, detail oil brushes. Detail oil brushes my favorite baby for all the time. I just make the picture much more large as I can and 
start to work very, very gently and soft. Usually I don't choose a lot of different colors to paint in here. Just choose the basic. You can see here is a very, very bad line. And switch color mode from a little bit darker to a little bit lighter. It will bad clear structure. Of course, here is very, very important to work with your tablet pressure. Always take care about it and always be sure it is soft enough because means your fan pressure is very, very hot. It is much uh, more difficult to use this kind of pump. Very smooth. So, you can see the value. Always keep attention about the light in your picture. Because if you just uh, switch the colors from light to dark, whatever you want, you may create some mess in your picture. And then you have in mind the complete picture. And then you always keep in mind the light source and the effect you want to get, the final result. This is going to work perfectly, always. A little bit smaller, uh -huh. as you can see, it starts to be much more realistic. Turning to the shot I was beginning from, here is really something I can make a little bit overdo. Because I like to do this, I really enjoy the process of painting it. So I just paint and paint and paint a lot, and after it starts to be a little bit more detailed. And um, to avoid this effect in the end of the work, I usually use some blender to make some pieces a little bit more softer to avoid this sharp like effect. So here you can see I try to create the line. Yes, yes, and as you can see, I don't use a lot of variability and a lot of settings of brushes. Indeed. It is more than enough for me to use the existing one. Just changing the diameter of brush and uh, the transparency. And also, as you can see, I'm not just um, going into the details of here, but I also at the same time create some base shape and try to make it more perfect and more correct. The same stuff with the um, environment and different details of people. For example, here I decided to make our piece with a lot of shadows. But as you can see, I use a lot of different details for here and makeup and other stuff. So, same together is also just a down to separate. So, here I can just use a simple brush, hard brush, and start to work with the new growth, of course, not just accidental one, you always need to keep in mind the shape of objects to see.
try to put much more attention with the details goals of the space and not going into performing. So, for example, here I would like to take care about the output much more because it is some further to place around the space. And you can see I just use one of two colors more than one. And for example, if I want to create some very, very detailed stuff, like as you can see here, I also put my glasses to the away and start to paint very, very so basically, I'm going in the mixing of different textures. For example, feather is something, some object which is very, very, very light. And the volume is very, very simple. Just Use small strokes of that, big strokes of that, and different transparencies, and that's going to be actually enough. There are the largest parts, for example, so I will just it's a very often happens like uh, I don't like something I think. Did it happen to me? So I just let it. Never forget to put some um, little more, a little bit more, so the look of your picture. Is it possible to compare different amount of details you add? And besides, do you want to get more of it, or do you just want to get lost? Now I would like to show you a little bit more about painting here. And it will be very good to see a fun harlequin character. The hair, is, uh, the hair is very significant part of her character. It's a very, very famous hair haircut. You can see. Here yeah, we can compare the basic graph I made for the hair. Here's the final result. Here, by the way, I can show you some layers because I just see how they're changed. Some basic shape I create to add more details and smooth and remove some different ones, more details and more details. Let's see at the top. So, and as you can see, a structure I need to create just a simple structure using the basic color. And after Thinking about the 
Isolating different shapes. Adding additional volume. And so on. And as you can see, I always follow the shape. Everywhere, when I think space, when I think yes, even on the ground, all the time, I always follow the shape because it is one of the most basic rules of painting. Whatever you paint, you need to follow the real shape of the object. One of my favorite settings to play with is the situation because this uh, gives me the possibility to mix different colors I already put in my canvas and create some more volume. And here you can see much more clearly that sun pressure is really very important. But when I give a little bit more pressure to my sun, I can create user space. Actually, even without changing in the angle of that. When I use very gentle surface, it gives me a possibility to create some small space and small space. Also, as you can see, I always take care about the light. The same with eyes and the nose and other parts of the face. Here it is very, very bad to see that. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's a couple yep. people that have to leave soon, and I have a yep. couple questions that I'm wondering if yep. I can ask you. Um, so we had, and uh, I, I put these into my own separate document here. I can't remember if this was Deb that asked this, but she was wondering <clears throat> if you start your paintings from a blank canvas or a photo. This is when I start the painting from a blank canvas. But of course, I use some uh, photo references in case when I can't make some sketches from a live model. I have a few friends, and uh, you can show it in you know, my pictures because some of my characters are really close to each other. So I have some friends, they um, work like my models. So when I need to paint some figure or um, figure how to paint some body turn, for example, here, really um, complicated position of body, as you can see, turning. And I asked my friend to be my model, she told me, just to understand, understand how this moving and create an annotation. And of course, I use some sort of references in case if I want to say something very special, like some historical stuff or something like this, because it's really hard to imagine it. So of course, very, very good to use some references, like a base. And of course, using references is really good when you learn anatomy and want to understand how 
people moving, how they acting, and uh, how we can still play with the people. Okay, fantastic. And then Allison was wondering, and I cannot remember, what the keyboard shortcuts are for resizing the brush. So well, I have Mac, so I guess it is, yes, it is um, close to, let's say, channel. Okay, so at my keyboard, it is a T face, and close to T, you can see the two face, the square, and it's still stuff. So, it is for increasing. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And what kind but of... of course, if I remember, you can change it in a parallel change of preferences. Right. Yeah, you can yeah. change any of the keyboard shortcuts if you yeah. go into preferences, everybody. And I also have a PDF shortcut document. Um, I believe it's posted on our website, but I can... Um, I can make that available to everybody after the webinar. And then one more question, and that is, what kind of tablet are you using? Uh, this one it is Wacom in tools. Okay. Yes. It's such a huge one. It's around A4 size. Usually I use A4 size all the time. Very, very beautiful. And I try to use computer and other tablets with the LSD screen, but for me it's a little bit distracting. Because as I started to paint more than uh, 11, more than 12 actually years ago, I started to paint a thousand, and I already used to use this uh, traditional tablet and take a look at my screen and just follow the pen. And now I can't see it. <laughs> yes, that was good. Thank you very much. That seems that it answered their questions. And now you also can see how I work with the details of space. Also use the details brush. And for this moment, you can see a lot of my soul. And you can see how I actually the space structure and add some shadows and highlight with a small, small pieces of brush flow. Some of this looks like a little bit strange, but when you don't need to see it and when you have a perfect structure of shadows and highlights of the picture, you can just smooth. Everything of uh, using the blender, so using the airbrush, or using some flash, flat, flat brush stuff. But you are gonna have to do kind of a very very small shadows and highlighting stuff. It really helps you to add some volume to your work. And as you can see, I work at the same time with the makeup, with the eyes, with the skin, and with hair. For me, it's no different to go, go to the details in the, all the process of creating work. For example, I can finish completely all the makeup stuff, and after the fit to change something with the skin. That's actually okay. So there's no room. You need to do something first and some stuff after. No, just do whatever you want and enjoy the process. Because basically the same as the most important stuff when you change is enjoying the process. Because it is definitely not uh, something that can be very, very sweet or fast. You just need to find something which is really good for you. Find something which makes you feel fun and enjoy all the stuff you're doing. So maybe it's okay to spend three or four or seven days 
is one feature before I really feel if it's perfect and this is something I can add to my portfolio to case to viewers. So let's do this. Then we can apply to change a state of no. It's still there using the flat colors by the way. And as you can see, I actually am a very few this kind of stuff. The color palette. Because all the basic colors I have on my shirt. And if I need some additional one, I just take it from my palette and mix it. And this is how I work. You can move it up to the same side. The same with the uh, outfit. Outfit and uh, clothes, this is actually the second stuff I like to change my vegetable as a hair. Because here is, you can also create a lot of different texture and to play with different things. For example, I usually very, very intense in very uh, difficult textures like to you something like this. It took it a lot of play of life. You can spend really a lot of time to take a look at some references or some stuff in the real life just to understand how this structures work with each other and how you can still see this in the future. Uh, because you need just not to see just the um, structure of some clothes. You need also to see how this clothes work with your character body. To make it solid. Because as you can see here, in this position, I have a pen of characters and uh, working with the structure of place is uh, actually, is actually the one possibility for me to see here this moment, moment of the movement. And then we can really like to work with that. that color. And after going to all of them and that There is some um, heat in the traditional painting, especially in aquarelle. When you use transparent colors and uh, place a lot of different colors both one to another, making a gray painting. It's something I don't like to do a lot. Because as you can see, the basic structure, the basic rules of a stroke of brush is still visible, but at the same time I place a lot of different modulated and um, not so much transparent stroke on it. It's very beautiful. So highlight. See? Now you can see how you like that thing. And here you can see a little bit more with the colors. Let's open it. 
By the way, as you can see here, I also play the pieces with these different parts. I work with um, face and hair shot. After I go to the out piece and some of this more stuff that hand and then the label back. Yeah, you can see fifty percent completely made. At this moment it is a lot of different uh, colors and those here, but it is still not completely down. Because I need to get more light. It's a little something, something. And usually as far as I go with the um, painting, as close I am to the finishing playmate, as small diameter of brush I start to use. As you can see here, brush is really a small diameter. Very, very thin. Very, very thin. Mm -hmm. so. so it's a bit more volume to that. And by the way, as I already mentioned, it is not necessary to finish all the stuff you add. For example, here, this is some difference between the validation of it and the validation of the um, back of the piece. So, it is okay. I don't need to go much more into the case here or for example here. It's absolutely enough to work very, very carefully here and keep it as it is. Give the possibility to be able to imagine there is some distance between different parts of the policy body. Also, as you can see, example here, there is a little bit non-accurate, and I really like it, and I would like to do much more wild as this. And um, here, for example, also, I want to show some texture of golden green. What I just use a rope of brush to smooth everything. I'm going to and add a little bit of Here you can see also how carefully I think here. And for this moment, in my opinion, it's a little bit overpainted. So when it's overpainted, I just do like A little bit smooth. Something also with a very, very transparent uh, brush because I don't want to lose all the texture I already made. I just want to smooth everything a little bit. Give it a little bit more stuff. And maybe add a little bit more highlight. Like. Also, I would like to show you some kind of fun which I use for painting environment. As I already mentioned, the ground is very uh, not important part for me. Usually, I focus just on um, character. But sometimes, you really need to take a little bit more attention. For example, like people yeah, like people like this. 
is a lot of different water spots around some flowers and um, leaves and other stuff. So here, using the same brushes, you also can create different textures. But when I think environment, I usually almost never use oil brushes. I really concentrate with them just to the hard shape. And never go into very, very specific details. Just work with a very short and small stroke. Because I don't want to put a lot of viewers attention to the environment stuff. Just to the main color. Yeah, and some small flowers, for example, and decorate some leaves. Yeah. You can also decorate um, half of your ground. For example, you can paint more carefully and um, actually add some parts of the or few flowers or some leaves, something like this. And other parts of the ground, just it's very, very blue and soft. Also made additional volume and we can see the reach the attention of the audience too much from um, main characters to different very beautiful but absolutely not so important stuff around it. The portrait painting is always about the portrait. It is always about the um, main character. Never bound the environment. Of course, in case if you work like a landscape painter or something like this, you need to be care about the environment much more. But not in my case. Yeah, even I'm so care a lot about the flower there. Oh, this and color. And for example, I want to take the texture of water because as you can see here it's stoning, this is a yeah, it's stoning on the water. So too much. I'm going to use some of different um, brushes uh, with textures, like in pasta, for example, and something like this. The creating texture is really something you need to do by yourself, not to use some mechanical stuff which is included in software. I try to keep balance between different kind of stuff. For example, as you can see here, I use a very rich decorated dress. But for me, it is absolutely obvious that I don't need to paint it all really properly. I mean, this is just about the top. And the Katarina, I just yeah. wanted to make you aware that it's four minutes to the hour. I know when the yeah, artists get... I know. <laughs> oh, I mentioned this is the painting process is really, really long stuff. So, what something I can do to do everything I want. You're getting a lot of comments about how amazing your work is. But I have to admit, oh. we've had some audio problems. So I'm going to try to do my best to get that fixed in post-production. Um, so everybody, if you're waiting for the recording, it might take a little bit longer. I probably won't get it up yeah. today. Um, but we will get this posted. 
And I did have another question come in. I know that you mentioned that you're working on a Mac, and I believe yeah. you're on the road right now, too. But do you traditionally yeah. work on a desktop or a laptop? I have a laptop. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah, I use my um, MacBook during the last, I don't know, 5 or 6 p.m. And, you know, it is really absolute enough for me because I never had some troubles with um, colors or printing or something like this. And it's uh, powerful enough to paint. And it is very difficult for me because I really spend a lot of time abroad, not at home. So I just can take my laptop with me and paint whatever I want. Right, it's convenient for sure. Yes, yeah, so that's because you don't need to have a lot of uh, different expensive stuff, like expensive computer with a lot of um, repetition memory. You don't need to have the most, most modern uh, tablet or something like this. Everything you need to have is a really good software and really good knowledge about what you want to say. And you need to have a lot of Passion to understand what direction you want to go and to understand what is your main goal and what is the favorite stuff for you. Where do you want to go as an artist? What do you want to say? What is the much more fun for you? What kind of stuff you enjoy to do the best? And after just start to collect some knowledge about anatomy, for example. Start to collect some knowledge about the uh, environment stuff, about lighting, about textures. Take a look around and always keep attention on some interesting details because you can use it further in your future. So, the basic stuff I would like to tell the audience that you really just need a few simple stuff to start and to create something very, very significant. Just with no computer, just with no tablet, and just with that. That's all. I worked with a very simple stuff during all my career, and it never was a problem for me. And it was never some, I never just had some doubts because it was on a laptop, not on a new screen. It's actually over here. If you want to paint, if you really into, if you really have passion and um, you know really feel that you want to do this, just start to do this. That's all. Don't start try to make some explanation or something else. Like, I don't want to do this. I can do this because I don't have enough of a powerful computer or enough. Um, I don't know, enough money to buy the modern tablet. So. We have a comment from Dean, and I've noticed this same thing. The fact that you have extremely good directional control over your strokes. You just, yes. you make it look very fluid. And he's wondering, do you hold your stylus like a pen or a brush? Like a pen. Like a pen. And to this moment, actually, it's not so fast as, as usually, because when I work at home, my tablet usually on my English. And to this moment, I have different desk, so my tablet is on a desk, desk uh, the right side of me. Okay. So to this moment, I try to learn it's a bit unusual for me because I can't keep control of my brushes all the time. But as you can see, it really works not so bad. And of course, to this kind of control of your brushes, you need to have a lot of experience and you need to work as more as you can. Maybe it is something like I don't know, maybe something like a bicycle, you know, you need to paint every day. 
to use different brushes, to try different brushes. I tried a lot of brushes since I started with painter because I really wanted to find something which is very good for me, which really fits for our minds. And in case I like to paint uh, during the long time and take care and take attention to all the details, just realize I need to create my set of favorite brushes I was going to use all the time. So I just spent uh, a few weeks to try every kind of brush in Painter and choose my favorite one. It's absolutely perfect to all my goals. Do we have some other questions, Tanya? Now, people are wondering, do you create a lot of your own brushes? I see you, um, it looks like you're using a lot of the default painter brushes. Actually, I don't create any of my own brushes. Really, default stuff is definitely enough for creating all kind of texture you want. Really, enough. Because yeah, when you're saying traditionally, you have no possibility to create your own brush, correct? But anytime you can say and you can do it too. So I just use the default stuff and um, changing the opacity, changing the um, size of brush, and sometimes I really like to play with the situation and breathe. That's all. And usually I prefer to use this shape of brush, round. This is probably much more useful and comfortable to work with. Very interesting. And Dean is wondering, do you have a traditional painting background and do you still paint traditionally in addition to digital art? If so. Well, I started to paint when I was very, very small thing. And um, basically, of course, I paint traditionally. I love after I finished the uh, art class, but my art class was a bit to grasp. So I spent a lot just with the white and black stroke and line. Very, very hard one. And after I go to the digital class, and at this moment, unfortunately, I don't think traditionally at all. But for me, it is no different between painting traditionally and painting digitally. This is absolutely the same stuff, and I have no idea why people usually try to separate it and do some traditional painting a little bit more valuable than digital one. It is the same. You just change the treatment itself from real one, from real canvas, and real collected digital one, and this digital stuff gives you a little bit more variability sometimes. But a lot of stuff is absolutely fine, and you can read any of digital pictures, media, huge size, and it will be look absolutely wonderful and absolutely fascinating. It's absolutely not relevant for this small part. Thank you for that answer. And it looks like we've actually addressed all of, oh wait, there's one more. Um, uh -huh. Do you use smudge or blender brushes in your final work? Blender, sometimes. I can show you. For example, only one, it is nice. See, here I create a lot of different stuff, and sometimes I think it's a little bit more difficult. So I just use the blender to smooth some stuff and to add a little bit more smoothing texture. Now, but did actually, you, oh, sorry to interrupt. Um, no, do you actually, ever, yeah. sorry, <laughs> we've got the blenders category, but do you ever take one of the painting brushes and lower the saturation to make it a blender? No. No? No. Okay. It's just use blenders, or sometimes when I want to make my picture a little bit more smooth, I use digital airbrush 
a view diameter with a small transparency and just you see, do like this. Let's move okay. on. That's all. But I don't like to go too much into this because it makes can make it a little bit more flat, which is not good. Right. Well, it's been very fun to watch you work. A lot of people have said that. And thank you so much for all the time that you spent with us today. And the good thing is, I think we got to everybody's questions. So oh, that's really, really nice. That is fantastic. Um, so to all of you that are still on the line here, this is recorded. So I'll post this up to our YouTube channel. I'll um, try and correct some of the audio issues. And we will be having a Facebook chat for any of you that may have more questions that you didn't ask here. Maybe you were too shy. Next Tuesday, <laughs> Katerina is going to be taking over our Facebook page at, what time do we say? <laughs> I think it was, oh my gosh. Um, let me pull up my calendar. I think it was 12 o'clock Eastern time. But we'll be sure to remind you guys in the follow-up from the webinar, and we'll also post in social media. So if you'd like uh -huh. to come and actually chat with her live, um, she will be there on Tuesday of next week. So I don't know if there's I anything have, else. I have to remind people that, I don't know, Tanya, do you already post it on YouTube? If they are curious to see a little bit more of process of creation work, there's some speed painting of me painting the Harley thing. Oh, yes. Very good oh, point. Yeah. yeah, so people can watch a little bit more how I paint this spot. And I'll be sure if, when the reminder for the, um, the webinar goes out, I will insert links to the recordings for all of you so that you can easily find those. And also remind you about the Facebook chat. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Katerina. This is wonderful. Thank you very much, everyone, to join. To stay tuned for all this time. I really hope it's going to help you. And uh, also, I remind you if you want to read a little bit more about how I think. So I made a tutorial, even one, also about painting a hard screen when I go through the details and explain all the choosing of brushes, with actually the diameter of brushes and transparency of brushes, and explain what kind of brushes I choose for different textures. So I think for people it's going to be very, very interesting to read it too.